so here I am back from Morrison's Tuesday evening haul done, Tuesday evening clean done and I have lots of things in my goodie bag today uh, right let's have a look so first thing these tenderlish chicken cheese escalops these were not yellow sticker these were free with uh, Checkout Smarts. They were doing these last month as well, so I already have two of these in the freezer. So let's have another set. These were, how much were these? These were two pounds. So that's two pounds off my bill straight away because those are refunded completely. What else have I got? All sorts of interesting things today. I have, Potato croquettes were £2, now 50p. Pop those in the freezer for a rainy day. Wensleydale and cream cheese, cranberry and cream cheese swirl. Pink cranberry. That was 262 down to 66p. Nice little bit of cheese there. We have a big bag of chopped peppers. These were £1 down to 25p. You can get those into stir fries nicely. And the same with these. These are chopped mushrooms. These were also two, these were two pounds down to 50p. Lots of those there. Got to make sure I use those up because they won't last long pre-chopped. Um, but that's fine. Uh, right, what else have I got? I've got two smoked haddock here. Oh, smoked haddock. Right, this one was £2.70 down to 68p. This one was £1.96 down to 49p. Both of these I will chop in half and put in the freezer, as I do with all my fish. What else have I got? I got some Savers Strawberry Yoghurt. Don't normally buy these ones because these are the NAF ones, but just fancied it. 95p down to 24p. Don't get a lot of yoghurt at the moment. Um... Oh yeah, coleslaw, this was 165 down to 42p. And naughty thing I shouldn't buy, but do because Wednesday is clean day. I'll be back, I'll, by the time I get back I'll have missed lunch, so this is just tied to me over till dinner. This was a ham and coleslaw baguette. Uh, this was £3 down to 75p. And the last two things I got, shouldn't have bought these. I'm just in a real sugar crave thing today, so this was bad. So we have milk chocolate cookies, 150 down to 38p. I've already had one, just couldn't help myself. And I'm sorry to say there was a pack of uh, five jam donuts. These were one pound down to 25p. I'm not going to apologise, but I should apologise anyway. So that's my that's my shop. What did that come down to? So that came all came to seven pounds twelve. Knock off the two pounds for that tenderish thing, which is refunded anyway. So that's five pound twelve, and I will do the usual and put all the savings up, put up the price that it would have cost, how much I saved, so you know where the savings are. And uh, and that's it. That is the end of Tuesday. Yeah, that's the lot. This morning it's Friday and I've just been to Sainsbury's. It's the day after my hike and it's another glorious day here. Really lovely. Temperatures are up at the moment, which is really nice. And um, I got a few deals. I had to go down to Sainsbury's to pick up um, something from the eBay drop-off point at Argos. So I thought I'd get a couple of bits anyway and see what deals there were. Uh, Friday morning, so normally you wouldn't see that much. But, so first of all, I bought my fair trade bananas, which I like. Uh, 78p for those. And then I saw they were doing bags of greens for 59p. They were 75p. And they were also doing egg noodles. I love the egg noodles. These were not actually that cheap. They were one forty down to one pound fourteen. But by buying those three things, I had spent two pound fifty one, and I bought it on Nectar Points. 
so I only paid a penny for those three things. So that's my Friday morning haul, and that is about as exciting as it gets today. Um, what else am I going to do today? I might do some gardening, go outside and have a look. Um, I have one tomato turning red. It's been shocking, but I was watching a YouTube video this morning about how to ripen tomatoes. And there are various ways that you can do it off the vine when it gets too cold. Apparently 13 degrees is, is the cutoff temperature for leaving tomatoes out to potentially ripen. And at the moment we're enjoying some slightly warmer temperatures. It's going up to 15, 16, even 17 this week and I think into part of next week. So I'm going to leave them out for a bit. I had a feeling that we might have a warmer October Usually when we get a really naff summer, we often get a warmer October, and that seems to be what we're enjoying. It's really nice today. I've got windows open, and I went out today, no coat, just my hoodie, and it was lovely. So nice. So I'm just going to tool around with that. I've got to edit my hike video. That's going to take a couple of days, because there's, as usual, a lot of footage there to go through. And, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's my Friday morning. Today I baked an experiment. It's my usual simple cake recipe, but with a lot of lemon in it. I've just got to finish it off. It's a budget version of a lemon drizzle cake. So, as I said, it's my usual, very budget um, cake recipe with lemon rind, which I've had in the freezer from things from earlier in the year. And I've put some lemon juice in it from a lemon juice bottle. And what I'm now going to do is I took some of the lemon juice, mixed it with sugar, sweeten it up and now I'm just going to drizzle it on the cake and let it soak in. I might end up with a rather soggy cake here, I might have to put it back into the oven. We'll let it soak in and of course it may be hot but I'm still going to try it so let's see what this is like. Lovely and fluffy. Yeah, you can see that. Let's see how lemony this cake really is. That is spot on. What's nice as well is it's really lemony, but it's not that sugary. I tend not to put as much sugar in to cake recipes as I used to. So if it says three ounces, I'll put two ounces in. Um, I just don't need the sugar, but the lemon in it is fabulous.
cake is so moist as well. This is so good. such a cheap energy free recipe it's just some flour some margarine some bicarb I threw an egg in here I don't always put eggs in if I'm low on eggs and eggs are expensive then I don't put the eggs in you can put milk in instead but I kept the milk out today because I was using lemon juice and I didn't want the milk to go funny so where I put one egg in the lemon juice helps to moisten up the recipe when it goes into the tin and then I put in a good heavy handful of lemon rind which I've had in the freezer so I chopped it, I got it out, defrosted it, chopped it up, threw that in there um, that's been in there for probably about half an hour on about 180 degrees and I have a fan of them um, then after it came out, I've just drizzled the extra lemon juice on top. Make some holes in the top so that the juice can get in. And then just let it do its thing. It's so good. really pleased with that. That will keep me going for a bit. How much did that cost to make? I don't know. 50p. I don't, I probably should at some point, but I don't budget it because it's like lemon rind off a lemon that I bought as the yellow sticker discount, maybe even last year. At the very least, it was the beginning of this year, because I cannot remember the last time I bought lemons. Um, what else? One egg, which was also discounts. So I think 50p would be, like, a lot for a recipe like this for me. Because it's just so much discounted. Discounted stuff. Right, I've put it into a Tupperware box. I'm going to let that cool, and then I can put the lid on. In case any winter flies decide they fancy a meal. Because the flies are starting to come in. I'm going to put that last little bit of lemon juice on. Waste not, want not. And that's it. A variation on a theme. Watching Gardener's World last night, <laughs> like you do when you have a social life, and they were talking about how you can plant certain things in autumn to get a head start in spring. And two of the things they mentioned are sweet peas and regular peas, a type of regular pea called meteor. And I have Meteor, I've been trying to grow those this year. I've had some success, but I'm not actually that fussed about growing peas. You don't get a lot for quite a lot of work. Uh, so I'm not going to do it again, I'm just going to use up the ones I've got. And you can plant them now in autumn for a spring harvest, so to speak. And then what you can also do is plant in spring to have a later harvest. So I'm going to give this a go. The sweet peas you have to keep inside somewhere not too bright and cold so that they grow slowly. So that they're not going to kick in too early in the year and then apparently the peas 
you put out and then what they should do is kind of almost overwinter under the ground and then they'll spring up earlier in the year. So I'm going to give that a go. My, I don't have like a greenhouse or anything like that but my flat is probably relatively cold because I don't really heat it and if I keep them on a windowsill that isn't bright and not in a room that does get heat I'm hoping that might work now last year I decided to give broad beans a go and I planted broad beans in December because that's one of the times you can grow them and I kept them in on my window sills and they grew really fast and I was really worried that they were going to peak far too soon before I could get them out and they would die and somebody said to me yeah you planted those way too early you're not going to get anything out of them and they were still alive in spring so I put them out and they were the only crop this year that produced and I got loads of broad beans off them the second planting that I did didn't get anything off them so I think that the planting in autumn and winter rule can really work with the right types of seeds so I'll be doing that again with the broad beans because I had quite a lot of success with them and the flowers are beautiful and of course summer spring I think was quite nice but summer was dreadful so anything that I planted as a second crop just didn't work so I'm going to give that a go so I'm planting everything in toilet rolls as I always do so some of these are going to be peas and some of these are going to be sweet peas and we'll see how we get on So it's Sunday morning. I have been to do my double clean as usual. I've been to Morrison's, done my Morrison's Hall. Uh, we were told we were going to have like 80 mile an hour winds this weekend. Yesterday there was nothing. Overnight it got windier and today it's a bit windy but I wouldn't say it's 80 miles an hour. It's, um, I think it's the remains of, what is it? Storm Ashley or something, I don't know, but it's not that bad. Anyway, so I had a really, really good haul at Morrison's today. I spent £9.51, so I'm going to show you what I got for my £9.51. Firstly, I bought some bagels. Now, these were £1 down to 40p. I bought these because I just really fancied some, like, toast. I've got some of that lovely Wensleydale cranberry swirl cheese left. And I just really fancied it on toast rather than I've just been eating it straight out of the packet out of the fridge. And I do like bagels, so I've bought those. Most of those will go in the freezer. Another really good thing. Loads and loads of apples on discount. These are Granny Smiths. They're so six in a pack. They were £1.79, down to 54 pounds So I bought three of these. These are going to be great for my winter crumbles. Um, I think I am going to have to uh, partially cook and freeze them. I might keep a few out and make a crumble at some point during the week. Uh, Romain lettuces, two of those, they're the big tall lettuces. These were 99p down to 40p. Tomatoes, these salad tomatoes, six in a pack, these were 95p down to 38 so I bought two. They were doing some pies on discount and I thought I'd give this a go. I don't often buy pies, 
and normally I'd make my own but sometimes it's nice to have something that you can just take out the freezer and um, I got two of these they're Morrison's limited edition short crust pastry hunters chicken pies most of the pies in the supermarket are often a disappointment but sometimes it's a nice quick easy meal sometimes I just really fancy a pie and mash and I can make up the mash and stick the pie in the oven I bought two of these these will both probably go into the freezer these were £1.79 down to 54p each I also bought some corned beef I love corned beef this was £3 down to 90p uh, it's quite a thick pack there's nine slices in there and um, I don't think that's a bad deal. I don't always buy good things, but I think that was okay. What else? I bought some avocados. These were £1.50 down to 75p, pack of two. Don't often buy those because normally the discounts aren't very discounted because it's an expensive thing to start with. But I just really fancied it and it was not too bad. I bought more sausages because these are a good staple to just have in the freezer. If um, if I want to make a stir fry and I've got nothing that's suitable, I can just get out a sausage and use that. So these were £1.50 down to 90p, so I've got two of those. Those go into the freezer. These last for ages because I don't eat a lot of them. And there are loads of eggs on discount, so I've bought three, uh, three packs of eggs, six in a box. These were £2 down to 60p. Look at this, what it says on the front there, for farmers. 6p per pack they get, which sounds disgraceful. I think if they sold something like 6,000 boxes, they'd make 360 quid. Which egg farmer can survive on that? It's ridiculous. Anyway, so I got three of those, which now means that eggs I've still got in the fridge, I can use a little more liberally, so I might do a cake during the week with eggs, um, I might make an omelette, something like that. I might do like almost like an eggy bread thing, I love that. I might do some um, poached eggs on bagel. And that's it. So I have no idea how much that would have cost as normal. I will do the calculations there so you can see what the retail price would have been if I had bought everything at full price and how much I saved by buying everything on yellow stickers. As I say, all of that cost me £9.51. Um, we'll have a look, we'll see. May, that may well be double that on a full price. Good day! Lots of stuff for the stores, lots of stuff to keep me going for the next week or so. Um, lots of things that are going to last a while because eggs like... I easily leave eggs in the fridge for three months and they're absolutely fine. People make this big deal about, oh, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't use them after their dates, but I use everything beyond its dates. It's never a problem. Except maybe fish and chicken, and it depends on how it's been stored. Be careful. Anyway, so that's everything. That's my Sunday morning done. Um, have a few things to do, a bit of admin to do, invoices for cleaning, that sort of thing. And um, that's it, that's Sunday done. Good morning. It's Monday and my routine is different this week. I am doing my Wednesday clean this morning because on Wednesday the couple that I'm doing the clean for have their son's funeral. So I'm going in today and then tomorrow I am doing the fortnightly clean that I do. I had a text from someone the other day saying, you clean for my brother-in-law, would you be able to come and clean for me? And I said I was full because I do not want any more cleaning jobs. This is quite enough now. 
and I wouldn't have taken the Tuesday one if it was every Tuesday because it's starting to get in the way of the rest of my life otherwise uh, so that's where I am on that um, this afternoon I have I need to package up a vintage sale and an Etsy sale and then this evening someone is coming to pick up my bike I finally after six years decided to sell the bike and it's sold so someone's coming this evening and once that's gone I can rejig my front room so I have a better setup for my new walking pad which is going really well I've had it eight days I am finding getting in the steps really easy because I've positioned it in front of my standing desk and therefore I have to stand on it all the time I'm using it so I'm finding that easy and it needs to be because I spent a lot of money on that thing and I need to get my money's worth out of it this is not going to be a fad or a trend this is something that I have to do every day to try and deal with my exercise problem So yeah, that's this week. Not incredibly exciting, <laughs> but it's called real life. And real life is what happens when you're planning for all the other stuff that you never quite get round to doing. And it's weird how fast this year has gone because uh, last year I was talking about 2024 being the year that I made changes. And I have made some of those changes, lots of things are going better, my business is going better, my income's better, my savings levels are better, I hit some savings goals of things I wanted to do, so I'm feeling a little bit more secure, short term anyway, we are, well at the time of recording this we are still pre-budget, so who knows what's going to happen, thanks Labour. Um, but I'm already, I say already, we're not that far off. I am thinking about 2025. So how am I gonna do 2025 better? Am I just gonna let it slide and I'm, am I just gonna carry on doing exactly what I'm doing for another year? I think I started thinking about making changes when I was getting close to when my, my rent renewal was due and I was worried about what was gonna happen with that and my brain started to overthink what are the options if I lose where I live? How am I going to do that? And it kind of starts giving me itchy feet because I think, oh, maybe this is the year that everything changes and I have to move somewhere else or I start living in a van, all these sorts of things. Um, which of course didn't happen because I'm still, I'm still in my flat and my new year of rent has literally just begun in fact it began yesterday as of recording so I'm just parking up to where I do the clean I'm early as always so I have a few minutes to I like. It's cold today. Right, that's it. Catch up with you soon. Bye bye. morning and last night my bike went 
and as I took it down the stairs to uh, make sure that it was in place when the guy came to pick it up because I have to get it out from behind the door and I need to pump up the tyres because I wasn't sure how he was getting it back it just seemed easier and get it down the stairs and get it by the door and what have you I started to panic a bit and I thought I shouldn't be getting rid of this what if I end up needing it? What if I want to use it? I've had it for six years and I've used it twice. So that's a completely irrational thought. If I'd lived somewhere where I had somewhere better to store the bike, you know, not having to hide it up behind my front room door and then drag it up and down stairs every time I used it, and if the roads were a bit safer, I might use it a bit more. But I've never really been a cyclist. And our roads are just too dangerous around here. I've seen two cyclists hit on our roads just from the windows of my flat. I haven't even had to leave the flat to see that. So, I decide against that. <laughs> so that's that. The bike has gone, and I'd already sold the, the 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 turbo trainer thing that went on the back to try and turn it into a exercise bike. And I did use that to quite good effect in 2020 and a bit in 2021. But it's all gone now and the small amount of money I made from getting rid of both of those things has gone towards the um, oh dear. what is the matter with everyone on the road today crazy has gone towards the walking pad that I bought And so this morning I am now going to my Tuesday fortnightly clean. This is the one I don't like. And I said, I think last time, that maybe it's just because I haven't settled into it yet. But the drive is a bit of a pain. Sometimes it can be... It's, you know is it worth it for the amount of driving I have to do let's say I have to add 40 minutes onto my clean because it's like 20 minutes either way on a good day and then you want the house to be okay but it's because it's a big three-story house and I'm only hoovering the floors three bathrooms and a massive kitchen but the whole place when I get there, it's like everything's in chaos. Um, nothing's been moved aside so I can clean properly. There are, I've never seen so many pairs of shoes in my life. There are, I think it's 10 people living in the house. It's a three generation family home. And so when I get there, there are shoes everywhere. There are boxes on the floor. The kitchen is an absolute disaster. I've started doing the kitchen last because people are still doing breakfast and cooking and stuff when I get there. And it's just, I can't, how am I supposed to clean that? It's ridiculous. So it just makes things a bit frustrating. Um, and bathrooms are my least favorite thing to clean and I have to do three of them. I don't like doing other people's bathrooms. And it's also difficult because very often my 4Gs don't work there, so I can't even listen to podcasts to take my mind off it. So I have three hours of cleaning other people's bathrooms in absolute silence is just horrible. So last time I was there, I managed to get the podcasts to work, and it definitely took the edge off it because it gave me something else to focus on. So I'm hoping it works today. I really do. I'll see how I go. I'll, I'll press on with this job up to Christmas and if I'm still not happy with it, I'll ditch it. I don't need it that much. It's not paying me that much money, blimey. me. 
anyway so that is that'll be Tuesday um, and then now that the bike has gone I can rejig my front room a little bit to accommodate my walking pad a bit better because at the moment it's all a bit kind of scrunched up I've managed to rig up my furniture so that I've been able to push the walking pad forward when I'm not using it so that I can also stand at the laptop when I need to and so that I'm not tripping over the walking pad when I get through the front room door. But now that the bike has gone I can rejig and make use of that little bit of space that was behind the that is behind the door and that gives me more space where everything else is. So that's what I'm going to do this afternoon. I want to get back, I'm going to do some lunch. I need to go to the post office and put the cash in from these two jobs. And then, um, then we're done. So that's that. That's, uh, that's, that's Tuesday pretty much. So I will finish off uh, the rest of it later. So let's get down to this job, get this out of the way, and hopefully before I know it, I'll be on my way home again. Tuesday evening. I forgot about Tuesday evening entirely. So I've been out and done my clean. Luckily I didn't completely forget. And I've also been over to Morrison's, which was a bad thing. So... I spent £2.21 in Morrison's. Let's get the bad things out the way first. Dairy milk. Brownie bites. They were £2.50 for that. Down to 63p. I'm going to regret that, but love it at the same time. And again, I got caught by the doughnuts. These are not the jam ones though. I have just noticed it says caramel donuts on the front. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Too late. These were a pound down 25p. They've started putting these right at the front of the shop. So as you come through the security doors at the front, they're there. And there was one pack there. And literally as I walked past, I just went, yeah. And that was it. Shocking. That's the bad stuff over with. Now to the good stuff. More eggs. So many eggs. I've got to do some recipes with eggs. These are six free range. Morrison's £1.50 down to 30p. So I've got three of these. I am going to have to make some egg dishes because I have so many eggs in the fridge now. And the other thing I got. Now normally I would buy this at Sainsbury's and I would use Nectar Points. But six pint of milk. Uh, whole milk which I will divide up into six and put in the freezer as usual. This was £2.15, as all the six pints are around the supermarkets these days, down to 43p. So that's a pretty good bargain, considering that will end up making me 12 pints of milk. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. It's too late now for me to faff around with that. I will do that in the morning so that can go in the fridge overnight. And that's it. So, yeah, £2.21. As usual, information up there to show what I would have spent if I had wasted my money on full price and how much I've saved. Um, shouldn't be too bad today. So that is the end of Tuesday. Wednesday is going to be a quiet day for me. Um, I'm crafting. I've got to get some stuff done and up into the shop, uh, which I've been kind of getting started on but I keep getting distracted by admin and other work and all sorts of things and I really need to crack on so tomorrow is a crafting day so speak to you soon bye bye I really wanted to go on another hike this week I was gonna go Thursday because it was the only sunny day with guarantee of no rain but I have work to do and I had to prioritize work for a change I needed to get on with some making stuff for my studio to uh, put into my store. Hate to say it, but you know, Christmas is only around the corner now, and a lot of the stuff I sell is um, like giftable things. 
So I wanted to focus on one particular aspect of that. So there's one range that I do which I haven't really put much effort into. And that's these big chunky braided bangles. Um, I've got three or four in the store. And it uses the same technique as I use for my coasters. But you end up with these fantastic big chunky bracelets. So I've been three days now, but I'm in my third day of not doing anything but working and crashing this out so that I can then go back to doing all the other stuff. So I thought I'd show you a few of them. So this is the sort of thing that, that I'm doing. So these are the large size ones and that's how big they are. They're seven centimeters wide there and they'll fit probably most wrists. Um, real statement pieces so I've got them, I've done them in all sorts of different colorways and things like that and some there there's one there and there's also a thinner variety as well which are just under three centimeters wide and I'm doing similar a similar thing with those so you can see how those look so real statement pieces they take a while I think I did manage to do about four on day one and then the next morning I had to photograph them and I have a little studio set up which I will include there to show you how I'm photographing small items. Small items are so much easier to photograph if you can just get your lighting right. And I did a post I think last month about a little camping light that I bought, an LED camping light, um, or like a rechargeable one. And I wanted it so that I could work in my studio on stuff like this as the daylight changed and as the light wasn't as good but it's also really good for photographing small items because I can hang it from my selfie stick that my phone is now on and it puts the light because what you want is the light directly overhead and a white background so the white background is relatively easy I just need a strip of paper that's wide enough um, you hang it on a curve so that you don't get any corners where you can get shadows and then these are the results you can get so that's a better um, a lot of my photography isn't that great because I've not had the facilities now I've got that light and I rejig my studio earlier in the year I have a bit more space to photograph the little things like these fun bangles so that's what I've been doing for the last uh, t today's I think going to be my last day of crashing out a selection of these because um, I've run out of the bases that go inside and um, yeah that's it and I think that's going to be the end of this um, this update uh, I feel kind of restless at the moment and that's because I knew I had to get this done and until I finished it and it's all up and it's done I will continue to feel a bit mm -hmm. Uh, but I really want to go on this next hike and I'm just waiting for a day where the weather looks like it's going to be okay. I know where I'm going, I know what I'm doing and um, as soon as I can get out and do that the better because I really need to get out and do that. I was, um, I've still been clearing out the old hard drive from my laptop that I managed to explode last Christmas. So I've been using the, the, the other one as normal and I had a couple of other external hard drives so I've been filing everything onto different hard drives and all that and now I need to clear out the main one because I'm running out of room on it it's I think it's a I think it's a one terabyte and it's full and because I'm saving all my YouTube drafts and finals um, that's taking up a lot of room I think I'm gonna have to start deleting I don't know what I should delete I don't know whether I should delete the finals that are on YouTube or delete the draft material or I'm not sure what to do. Do I even need to keep them as a backlog? I think I'll keep certain things like keep the hikes and all that sort of thing but I don't know whether the day-to-day -day videos like this I need to keep, do I? I'm not sure. Anyway, so I'm going through all the pictures and because there are lots and lots of duplicates where I filed things and then I've forgotten I've already filed it and I filed it again. So I'm just going through everything and one of the folders I found or like scattered amongst various folders were all selfies I've taken of me over the years. And the earliest ones I've got on there 
date back to um, mid 2000 I think about 2007 2008 and I just look so different back then what's that 20 uh, 14 years 18 19 20 uh, about 15 about 15 years and I have changed so much and I just look such a state now I've so let myself go and really it's been certainly the last few years have been tough and I do blame some of that on you know the menopause and hormones and things like that my weight, weight has skyrocketed for no particular reason but also working from home since 2018 means you know my routine has changed I'm not going out as much I'm not doing as much because my work is based where I live so I'm really pleased that I didn't see those pictures before I'd bought the walking pad because at least I feel like I've got that control I can say right I'm going to walk 14,000 steps a day then instead and I've found it really easy to keep up with I've had no problem keeping up with my steps and how much of a difference it makes I don't know my legs feel better my hips feel better I feel more relaxed in the evenings because I've worked off some of that energy um, so that's been really good but um, I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make and I think coming into winter doesn't help I'm, I'm struggling with the daylight hours um, I definitely feel not run down but I don't feel as energized and it's now about I don't know about half nine in the morning and I'm just getting started for my my third day of doing these little things and I just feel a bit ugh. and I think a lot of that is the weather it's the wrong time of year to be thinking about getting active and things um, anyway I'm rambling now because um, I haven't really woken up and my brain is like so that wraps up this this week and um, yeah that's it <laughs> I've run out of things I'm going to make a crumble later today with some of those apples that I bought on I don't know whether it was my last haul or the one before they've been sitting there I really need to get in and do that but I need to get these little bangles done first nearly there um, yeah just trying to prioritise for a change um, so that's it yeah so catch you on the next one have a good week and speak to you soon bye